All right. Thank you, Dr. Chong, for your very professional insights on this energy management and carbon accounting. So just a brief introduction to all of you. My name is Sing Yi. So what's next after gathering all the data and knowing that you've emitted tons of carbon? So you might think, uh, like what Dr. Teo said previously, you pay carbon tax law. <laughs> but don't worry, there is something else to overcome this. Is you don't have to pay, might not have to pay carbon tax. So let me introduce you to the Renewable Energy Certificate. So just to align on certain terms, the Renewable Energy Certificate, in short, you can call it REC, or sometimes some of them call it REC. So you can think of this Renewable Energy Certificate as a degree certificate. But like a degree certificate, it's a proof that this person has knowledge on certain fields. So same like a degree certificate, REC acts as a proof. So it's a proof that this renewable energy, uh, let us say a solar panel, it's generating it energy. So in your degree transcript, there is a scoring system. So one correct answer, it's equals to one mark in exam, right? So for REC, there is this number of REC, or some of them call it volume of REC. So a very important point to note is that one REC represents one megawatt hour. So if you have a one megawatt peak uh, solar panel running for one hour, or maybe a 500 kilowatt panel running for two hours, then you'll generate one REC. Okay, so from, from this diagram, we can see that the energy generated by the solar panel is being sent to the grid, or also can be used directly to the consumer for self-consumption. So this consumer can still use the energy uh, back. This, uh, this consumer can use this energy and keep in mind that the production of REC will not affect the usage of the electricity. So as a solar investor, you can then have income from both the usage of uh, energy and also selling the REC. So what happens when REC is successfully generated? So when you sell this REC, someone else would have to buy them, right? So what can this certificate do if someone buys it? Let's look at scenario A without REC. So let's say you have a factory own, you are a factory owner manufacturing plastics, and you purchase a 1,000 megawatt hour of electricity from TMB. So in your scope two carbon emission, it will reflect that you have generated 758 tons of carbon dioxide or equivalent. So to offset this emitted carbon to make it to zero or to reduce it, here is where REC plays a very important role. So you can buy this REC and redeem this REC, let's say uh, because you are buying 1,000 megawatt hour from the grid, right? So you buy 1,000 REC to offset this 1,000 megawatt hour. So you end up with zero ton of carbon dioxide or equivalent for your scope two carbon emission. So there are a few important points to know about REC. First is the verification. So the production of this certificate would require verification through third party to make sure that this certificate is legit and it's not being double claimed. So it's not like uh, any person off the street can do this verification. It's like a bank note, for example. So only the bank can print money, right? So other if other people print it, those are fake money without verification. So second is the certification body. So there are a few certification standards. And one of the most common one is the international REC, which complies to international standards. So it can be traded globally. So the third point is the flexibility of the physical location of REC. So this Physical location does not matter as long as it is within a country. So maybe you buy REC from Malaysia to offset carbon from Malaysia. So that is all right. So maybe the renewable energy plant is in Kedah, but you, you emitted carbon in KL. So the Kedah REC can also be used to offset your KL carbon. And then the fourth point is that uh, there are some regions in this world that requires their vendor or supplier to meet a certain target of renewable energy portfolio standards. So by redeeming this REC, 
it is one way to meet these requirements as well. So to acquire these RECs, there are several processes. So as a, a renewable energy asset owner, you can enjoy the existing benefit, uh, like how it's shown on the left side of the screen. So you can still use the electricity generation, like how it is. And additionally, on the right side, you can see that uh, there's benefit from this REC without affecting the current scenario. So to acquire these RECs, the first step is to track your energy, know how much production it's uh, being generated, and then you can register them under the REC registry. This is like an entrance exam for your assets. So once it's accepted and approved, then you may proceed to the next step, which is the issuance. So once the issuance is also completed, approved, you get the sample that you see on the screen. You get an REC. And once you get the REC, you can either sell it to other people who need it, or you can redeem it for your own, your own company. So just like a degree certificate from different university, there is also different types of RECs. So there's IREC, TIGER, and MREC, just to name some of them. As for the fuel type, it is like your degree cost. So are you generating energy from solar, biomass, hydro, or small solar, or sorry, small hydro? If, if you are, then you may register this for under REC. And of course, since Different country would have a different grid and different electricity policy. So these regs are then categorized in terms of a different country of RE generation. And finally, the vintage is like your year of study or your year of graduation. So it's broken down into mainly the year, like 2022, 2023, or maybe first half, second half of the year, or even until the quarters like Q1, first quarter, second quarter, and so on and so forth. Yeah, next. So this is one of the case study uh, from the asset owner point of view. So one of our clients, they have been selling their energy generation to uh, factory consumers. So this factory consumer, they pay the investor for the use of this energy. So on top of that, this investor, they also can get additional income by selling uh, the REC to other people. So this additional REC selling, uh, one of them has increased their ROI by 10 to 20%. So with this better ROI, I hope that uh, we will be having more investors in this renewable energy sector. So the world will then have more renewable energy. So we also have, uh, uh, sorry, next please. Yeah, so we also have a client who is the direct owner of the solar consumption. So for this case, they get to save money on their electricity bill. Back. Yeah, they get to save a uh, previous slide. So they get to save money on their electricity bill, as well as they get to additional income from REC as well. Right, next. So there are groups set up to drive the renewable energy usage, and RE100 is one of them. So RE100 stands for 100% renewable energy. So meaning that any company that aims to have 100% renewable energy usage by a targeted year will be considered as a RE100 company. So Apple is one of the RE100 company. But imagine you have a factory and you want to not use any energy at all to produce a product. That's just ridiculous, right? So one way to offset the carbon is by redeeming the RECs. So from this graph that we see, uh, we can see that Apple is targeting to have a net zero carbon by 2030. And that's like six years from now. So every year they would have to meet a certain target you can see the graph, it's de declining. So they could, one of the ways to get to their target is to purchase and redeem RECs. However, there's also some requirements by RE100 that all these renewable energy assets has to be, uh, have their commissioning date 
after the year of 2010. So if your company is aiming to reduce carbon emission in your reporting, REC is one of the ways to do it. And that's next. I think that's all from me. All right. Thank you for listening. <laughs>